Hello and welcome. This is a quick tutorial of the Skype for Business app running on Google Android. The interface is the same on Android as it is on iOS, so if you have either of these uh, platforms it will look very similar. So I'm out on the road today actually recording this, so apologies for any sort of background noise. It's, it's going to happen when you're out and about. But really it's all about using this app when you're not connected to your actual desktop or your Skype for Business phone. It could be that you're remote from the office, so maybe you're a planning officer, for example, and you need to be able to find the relevant people with relevant skills back at the office. So we can use the Skype for Business app in, in order for you to be enabled for that. So if we open up the Skype for Business app, which is the top left here, there's a couple of things we'll notice within the user interface. So you'll see at the very top up here is um, my presence indicator. So I've got a green orb showing that I'm available. I can see buttons for calendar, my dial pad, which I've got three missed something. So I need to have a look at that in a minute. And also having a look through my contacts and even my phone contacts as well to be able to call from there. I can see very clearly that I've got some upcoming meetings. They're actually Skype for Business meetings as well. So I've got a button there that I can click and join those directly if they weren't Skype for Business meetings. So this just a preview from my calendar. I would be able to see what's next in my calendar and what's coming up. We can see recent calls and missed calls, which are actually in, actually in bold here. We can click on my icon here, a lovely picture of myself. And we can change what this note says. So it could be a note to everyone with the organization saying, hey, I'm off site with this certain customer today, or please don't instant message me. I'm busy. Please uh, send me an email or something like that. So we can change that on the fly. We can go through in and click on profile. Um, we can do call forward settings and we can also go into an enhanced settings as well. So we'll go into that in a little bit. Let's jump across to the calendar a moment. So we can click on this calendar icon up here and it's going through my normal Outlook calendar. Uh, so I can see I've got two meetings here that I can join. Uh, I know I need to travel home later and it's date night tonight. So I better make sure I, I make that. But for this project meeting, for example, if I want to join that, I can click on the join button and I'm able to use that one click to be entered into that meeting. So it's joining into that meeting. At the moment, we can see at the very top that uh, it's just one participant by there. And we're just waiting for my colleagues to be able to uh, join into this. And we'll see the number of participants being able to uh, uh, be, appear, be appearers at the top there. So we can click on that and actually see all of those people joining. We can see a uh, little indicators down here, whether they're in the call or not in the call and what capabilities they can see at the moment. So we can see Adele is connected, but she's not enabled her, her voice or video just yet. So it might be that she's maybe having problems connecting, um, or it could be that uh, she's out in the road and she's connecting through in different ways. So it might take a little longer for that person. We can see presence indicators. So Adele has got a green tick, so she's available, but we can see that Alex and myself have got a, a red orb now because our status would have changed to be in a conference. So uh, you can see very clearly from, from other people who is connecting uh, about what they're doing and their availability. We can also see that we've got no attendees. So that's people outside my organization. Uh, typically where they're able to join the meeting but not necessarily show their desktop or show content and things like that. So we can do that. We can add people within here as well. So we can search the directory. So if we search for Angela, for example, we can see she's offline at the moment, but if she was online, we'd be able to drag her into this meeting if we needed to. Perfect. So let's jump back there. We can see that Alex is speaking at the moment because his, uh, his contact information is up there. Just to talk you through the different buttons. Okay, we're talking via voice at the moment, but if I want to enable my video, then we can hit this video icon. We can choose how the audio is being presented. So if you're connected to the Bluetooth within your car, then you can switch between the earpiece of the phone, the actual loudspeaker on the phone, or the Bluetooth of the car, or your headset, or, or whatever you're using there. Uh, we've got a dial pad so we can uh, use the DTMF tones if we need to, if we're dialing into another conference. Or we can click on the, the more button to be able to present a PowerPoint file from my actual phone. 
Uh, we can view content as well. So if, uh, if Adele actually shows her desktop or was to uh, just share a file, say, say she's got some PDI information on the screen she doesn't want to share with other people, you can just share the information that they actually want to. So what I'm going to do is just get Adele to upload a, a small PowerPoint file for us and we can show you what it looks like on there. Some other important information, say you want to go on hold, uh, we can do that capability here. Or the call me back feature is if you're on a really kind of rubbish uh, internet connection or you've got rubbish 3G, it can call you back over the, the normal uh, GSM network and we can still uh, connect to that call. We can see that Adele now is presenting. So we can ignore or accept that information. So I'm on Wi-Fi, so pretty good connectivity here, he says, as it says it's loading. And we can choose to use different actions so we can stop viewing the, the PowerPoint presentation. We can take over as a presenter and present our own files from our, our mobile phone as well. The orientation of this, although we got it in uh, portrait mode, we can change to landscape to, to make it bigger. And we can actually advance through, through to these slides as well using these left and right buttons. Um, although this is just one slide for this particular demo, uh, just to show you that's possible there. We can do things like instant messaging within this conference, so everyone will get my message and we can have a side uh, conversation if we want to. And we can go back and scroll through. So we use this quite a lot internally to Microsoft and lots of other organizations are, are already doing this as well. So let's jump back out of that conference. Let's hit the hang up button and walk you through what else there is. So we can see recent information. We can see that there's uh, a dial pad here with uh, number three next to it. It means that I've got three voicemails. So the first tab is the dial pad. So it means if there's a normal uh, telephone number that I want to call, then I can type that in there. It's actually making a call through my 365 or my Skype for Business Online tenant. Um, if you're using Cloud PBX or you're using a, a hybrid sort of setup back to your on-prem uh, legacy or traditional telephone system, then that's going to make the call through that business system. We can hit voicemail here so we can see numbers that have actually left me a voicemail message or if it's people within all my inside my organization or are federated with my organization, we'll be able to see the actual people's name uh, within here as well. If we click on this, we can see contact information. It could be I want to phone this person back directly or I can actually hit the, the voicemail itself and choose to, whether, to listen to it on the phone um, or it could uh, just call them directly or I can delete it from here as well. The third button here is my contacts. So it's showing me my favorites and my personal contacts that I've, I've actually built. So out of the box, when you get Skype for Business kind of given to you, you don't get any contacts. It's up to you to be able to uh, segregate those different contacts to meaningful groups to you. So I've got uh, added by. So these two people here have actually added me. I can see that uh, the Katoso team, I've got two people here with Adele being available. Uh, and other contacts maybe that are outside my organization that I'm trusted and federated with as well. Or right at the top here, I can hit uh, the call a phone contact. So what that's going to do is bring up my contacts on my mobile phone, but actually make the call through Skype for Business. So that might be something that you need to do. And obviously there's a search icon up here. Let's jump into the advanced settings. So this is quite common around questions about controls on mobile devices and, and what you can do. So you'll see that call forwarding is not forwarded today. So if I click on that, um, we can choose to forward all calls to a certain number. So it could be voicemail, for example, or it could be a number of my choice, or it's looking up Active Directory to see what mobile numbers are actually in there. So I can choose from those. Or in cases that you aren't connected to the Skype for Business app or not logged in on your normal desktop or phone, you want, still want to be able to, uh, for those calls to be connected to you. So it's up to the individual, but they can use something called simultaneous ring to call a number of their choice. Um, so I could choose my mobile number, for example. So when a call actually comes in to me, um, 
If I'm logged onto the Skype for Business client, great, it rings on my device, what device is. If I'm not logged in, then it will find me and, and ring me over the normal GSM to my mobile number, so my mobile will ring. Which means you have one number to provide to people. You don't have to give your desktop number uh, and your mobile phone number. It can just be one number that you provide to uh, your customers. So let's set that up. We can just go back there. And that's uh, set up for all the time, just show you that. So it could be what happens during uh, working hours, which you set with an Outlook, or it could be all the time that I've got set here. Some other options to go through are these voice settings. So you can choose between three. So if you're making or receiving calls, is that always over your data? So that could be a data plan on your actual phone, or if you're using Wi-Fi, then the call is gonna be done over Wi-Fi. But what I normally have set up is look at whether the Wi-Fi is connected. If so, then use the data over that Wi-Fi. If it's not, then call me back over this number down here, which is my mobile number, so I can uh, um, get those calls sent to me. So if I'm connecting to a conference, for example, the actual system will call me back on my cellular phone rather than going over some dodgy network, especially if you're going up and down the M4, for example. Or it could be that you want always to go over cellular. You're not, want, not wanting to use anything over data. So there's some toggle buttons. So we need to require Wi-Fi for kind of bandwidth heavy uh, content, uh, especially for app sharing and things like that. We get some proxy details in here if you've got a proxy. Uh, and one important thing to note here is the automatically rejoin meeting option. So that means if you're connected via data, for example, and it drops all of a sudden, the app will automatically call you back on your cellular number. Um, and then you rejoined automatically to that call. So you're not having to, to fumble about trying to get back into that meeting. And that is it. We can also sign out of this app as well. And we can have multiple different logins. So I've got my uh, my corporate one set up here and also my demo tenants that I've, I've walked you through. So you can flick between different personas if you need to. Excellent, if you've got any questions, let me know. Um, and comment down the bottom and we will speak to you again. Thank you very much.